Hello everyone, welcome to my channel RPG Retro Reviews. I'm Captain Courageous and I review old school modules and games and try to give them a fun and informative analysis. This week I'm taking a look at a post-apocalyptic role-playing game from Goblinoid Games called Mutant Future. As you may recall, Goblinoid Games is the same publisher who produced the classic OSR game Labyrinth Lord. And Mutant Future is 100% compatible with that venerable OSR game. So let's go ahead, pry open the covers, and take a look at what Mutant Future has in store for us. Released in 2008, Mutant Future is a collaboration between Labyrinth Lord author Daniel Proctor and Ryan Denison. What is immediately clear upon examining this game to anyone familiar with TSR's old Gamma World game is that Mutant Future is greatly inspired by it. Many of the tropes and conceits of that game are present here. The Game Master is called the Mutant Lord, and players can choose to play a pure human, a mutated animal or plant as in the original game, but Mutant Future adds in three types of androids drawn from classic science fiction, such as Blade Runner and the Alien franchise. The basic android is humanoid, but up close, its glossy skin and unnatural texture reveals them for what they are. The synthetic android is wholly inorganic, but indistinguishable from a human. They have that milky white blood substance and require special sensors to be discovered to be something other than human. Finally, there is the replicant, which is an artificial biological organism grown in a vat from synthetically created DNA with a lifespan of five years. The heart of the character creation system is of course the mutations, which are determined randomly based on what kind of character the player is creating except for pure strain humans, which gain a plus three bonus to charisma, intelligence, and constitution. These are hardier humans, having survived the devastation, to remain unmutated, and so roll 1d8 per point of constitution for hit points, rather than 1d6 like everyone else. The list of mutations is pretty significant, and the explanations take up all of section three and it is categorized based on plant, physical, and mental mutations as well as drawback mutations which are detrimental in some way to the character. If you are familiar with Gamma World, there is a lot you will recognize here, but there is also a significant amount of new material. If you are familiar with Labyrinth Lord, or even the Maldve Cook version of basic D&D, then you will find that the material herein is wholly compatible with it. That is, Labyrinth Lord characters could end up in a mutant future world and vice versa, and be completely compatible game system wise. The character progression is via a single experience point chart just like in the original Gamma World game with similar randomly determined bonuses applied to either damage, attacks, or ability scores. The equipment list is amazingly comprehensive and well described with a significant amount of page count dedicated to detailing the various items and game terms. For the most part, the chapter order and details mimic what you will find in the basic version of Labyrinth Lord, with the adventuring rules mimicking much of the count content therein, with such things as encumbrance rules, light and darkness, traps and trap detection, monster morale, and on and on, all following a familiar format and resolution systems that replicate or are compatible with the things you would find in the Labyrinth Lord game, which makes jumping into this game super easy for that reason. The rulebook is 162 pages long and it is used very efficiently. The Specialist and Wasteland Services section is especially handy for helping a Game Master determine who can be hired and what kind of things can be produced in this post-apocalyptic landscape. This section is oh so helpful in informing the Mutant Lord as to what kind of setting this is and perhaps might spur the imagination to create an adventure that will require the player character to seek out such individuals. 
The experience point award systems mimic that from Labyrinth Lord and D&D Basic, as does the encounters and combat sections, basically lifting it whole cloth into Mutant Future, further easing entry into the game system, but adds in little tweaks here and there to compensate for the science fiction elements of the game. If you played in the original Gamma World setting, you might recall the somewhat complex technology flowcharts the game employed in order to determine the character's ability to figure out the workings of the technological artifacts of the ancients they might uncover while exploring the ruined landscape of the game world. Divided into three different complexity levels, while interesting, they were frequently cumbersome to use. Mutant Future does away with all of that in favor of a percentile roll with a base chance determined by what the artifact is and the amount of time dedicated to discerning its use. There's still that chance of self-injury when fiddling with things you don't understand, but I think this is a cleaner, fairer system. Like the Gamma World system, it takes into account the intelligence of the person trying to figure the item out and the complexity of the item being examined based on what kind of thing it is. For example, a slug throwing weapon has a complexity class of 1, while a computer or medical device has a complexity class of 3. Mutant Future incorporates D&D-like saving throws, with 4 of them rather than 5 types, energy attacks, poison or death, stun attacks, and radiation. Mental attacks are resolved in a similar manner as per TSR's Gamma World with a chart comparing an opponent character's willpower scores. While monster and melee attacks are resolved in the traditional D&D style via attack tables versus armor class. The monster listing format is also duplicated from Labyrinth Lord here as well, adopting many unique creatures giving them a science fiction flair, but also adapting some Dungeons and Dragons monsters into the setting, such as the Black Pudding, Giant Centipede, or the Brain Lasher, which is clearly a substituted Mind Flayer. Given the nature of the Brain Lasher, its presence in this science fiction setting is especially appropriate. There are also quite a few creatures adapted from other science fiction works, both movies and novels, such as the Cyborg Commando, the Morlocks, adapted from H.G. Wells' classic science fiction tale, The Time Machine. The monster listings take up a good 40 pages of this work and certainly will provide prospective game masters with inspiration for the type of stories that can be told in this post-apocalyptic landscape. Section 7 of the rulebook is dedicated to technological artifacts, which are essentially the magic items of the mutant future world, and is a massive section detailing everything from blaster rifles to powered armor. This section has 26 pages of treasure tables and technological items that potentially can be found in the ruins that dot the landscape of this post-apocalyptic world. Powerful technological weapons such as fusion rifles and vibroblades can be found here, but also hologram projectors and high-tech medical devices that can accelerate the body's natural healing functions. Much of what's here can also give insight into the type of world the characters are adventuring in and can certainly be inspiration for future adventures. The final section is Mutant Lord Lore. This section brings everything presented in the rules so far together to try and give an idea as to what the game world is like. While Mutant Future doesn't describe exactly how civilization as we know it came to an end, the game's conceit is that mankind had reached a point of high technology that far surpasses our current levels and then something happened, be it a nuclear holocaust or some other catastrophic collapse. The ancient ruins of the fallen civilization still stand and their advanced tech can be discovered if one knows where to look and can manage the dangers that such exploration entails. This section does an excellent job detailing how to set up potential scenarios and actually includes a mini-adventure, Mind of the Brain Lashers, which puts all of the previously described snippets into action, including a classic Hex Wilderness campaign map that the Mutant Lord can use as a basis for their own campaign. One of the things that I think some old school rule designers miss is the importance of including an example adventure in the rules to demonstrate the type of adventures that can be had with their rules. 
Mind Flayers have always been one of my favorite monsters from Dungeons and & Dragons, and their adaption into this post-apocalyptic science fiction setting is very appropriate. One of the mutations that the Brain Lashers have is called Ancestral Form, and they use that power to devolve human captives into Homo erectus, making them easier to control. Certainly a horrific fate for player characters if they find themselves at the mercy of these cruel creatures. The final section of the rules, Mutant and Mazes, provides rather comprehensive guidelines for converting back and forth between Labyrinth Lord and Mutant Future. And the final pages are black and white character sheets and hex grids that can be used by Mutant Lords to make their own wilderness maps. Getting yourself a copy of this game is super easy. The PDF at Drive-Thru RPG is only $14 and is available for print on demand as well. The soft cover book is $18.46 and the hard cover is $10 more. The artwork for these rules is nothing but top-notch, old-school black and white artwork and as it should be is very evocative of the setting the rules are trying to present. As you can see here, the bizarre and weird gonzo nature of the setting is lovingly portrayed and suggestive as to what kinds of adventures might be had using them. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of material written specifically for this rule set, but certainly given its emulation of the older TSR Gamma world, those adventures could easily be adapted for use with these rules with nominal effort required by the Game Master. So, let's go ahead and take a look at Mutant Future on my D20 scale of style, presentation, and value. The choice to emulate the chapter format of Labyrinth Lord was a good one. If you're familiar with the OSR, Old School Dungeons & Dragons, or Gamma World, these rules will be easily absorbed by you, and certainly most people picking up these rules will most likely be coming from one of those games, but it's an excellent format in its own right, and even a novice will find these rules easy to understand. The old school artwork is excellent, and that further makes this easy reading. I'll rate the style here an 18. As I said, the layout for these rules is amazingly easy to follow. The presentation is smooth, dynamic, and brisk. There's plenty of detail to allow the game master to quickly adapt this wonky gonzo setting as their own, but of course one has to be open to this type of roleplay to really enjoy what is offered here to its fullest. If you do not care for a post-apocalyptic role-playing game, clearly this rule set isn't for you. But then again, why else would you be watching this review? The list of mutations is comprehensive and sprinkled with plenty of callbacks to other works of science fiction, but not overly so. It definitely falls into the realm of homage rather than plagiarism. This is an easy rating of 19. Finally, let's talk value. Great work, easy to understand rules and soft cover print copy and PDF for under $20. This is a great game at a great price, natural 20. That brings my overall rating for Mutant Future from Goblinoid Games to a 19. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you all so much for watching. Coming up next week, I'm going to return to the U series with U2 Danger at Dunwater and finish up with that series with U3 The Final Enemy. As usual, I'd like to give a big shout out to all of my wonderful patrons. Your continued support makes these videos possible. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you enjoyed this old school module review, please help support the channel by giving it a like, comment, and share. Follow me on Twitter and join the channel's Facebook page, Dungeons & Dragons RPG Reviews. Consider supporting the channel and more content like this by becoming a patron yourself. Or alternatively, you can just leave a tip in my PayPal tip jar. Links for everything is in the description. And as always, my friends, may your d20 roll true and game on. Bye.